Kevin? No. It's Iowa. Ben, let's beat it, man. I don't like it here. You know what happened to Johnny Gobbs. What are you, twigged out? Johnny Gobbs got ripped and took a walk off a roof, all right? No big loss. No, man. That ain't what I heard at all. I heard that the bat got him. Oh, no. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tweet to all your friends about me. What are you? I'm the pod of dreams. And this is Batman, 1989. Every punk in this town is scared stiff. They say he can't be killed. They say he drinks blood. Is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? Vicky Vale. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? He's a tired old man. Can't run this city without me. Your luck is about to change. Terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. Okay, welcome everybody. Where do you get all those wonderful toys, Ben? This is Batman 1989 on the Pot of Dreams. Thanks for listening. Uh, love this movie. Rewatch for me. The reason I picked it is we're you know coming up on the new Batman movie. It's out already when you listen to this. Ben, you have seen the new Batman. You've seen all the Batmans. Um, what did you think of the 1989 Batman? Man, I was very prepared to think this was going to be really corny and cheesy and not nearly as fun as I remembered it in my head. That's what I was thinking before I watched it. But boy, did I have the opposite reaction. So, and I, I this isn't, I don't want to spend the whole time or really much time at all comparing it to the new Batman, the Batman, the Matt Reeves one. But a little context, I think, did inform my viewing a little bit, not, not all of it, but a little bit. I saw the Batman uh, with my wife liked it, but it was like Matt Reeves looked at the Christopher Nolan Batman movies and said, you know what? Those movies aren't dark enough. They aren't filled with enough shitty people. There's not enough death in those movies. It's just not as bleak and depressing. And so I saw that one before I came back to this one. And it was just like this glorious, glorious palate cleansing, joy filled viewing experience. I had fun basically from the first frame all the way to the end. Not that it's perfect or it's the best movie of all time, but boy, it was fun. Make, make Batman movies fun again. I might be in that camp. What do you think, Eric? Well, that see, that's a, that's a thin line to walk, though, because they they kept making Batman movies fun, and then they got ridiculous with the like Batman and Robin and the the Mr. Freeze ones, which are just like they're they're trying to be too much of what Tim Burton was doing. They're trying to make them fun, and they just got stupid. Well, so, I view that as a Joel Schumacher problem. I mean, maybe. yes, the tone's all wrong, the balance is off, for sure. But Joel Schumacher is just a cornball. And does Are we it, we land in that Christopher Nolan had it had the best sort of balance of that or 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 no? 
Uh, no, so I mean, uh, well, I mean, if we're, if we're turning this into a comparing all the Batman movies podcast. No, just yeah, certainly let's not do that. But yeah, there's, I mean, no, there's no almost no goofiness. I mean, Christopher Nolan came in with Batman Begins, and there's very little goofiness in it at all. I mean, it's a serious movie. It's not as bleak and depressing as the newest one, but it's he's like we're just done being serious. It's just it's like the change from like a Roger Moore's take on James Bond, which is incredibly silly and cartoonish cut to and we miss that everything in between and then just go straight to daniel craig it's this kind of sharp contrast although batman had their transition to, to goofiness as well but that's kind of the comparison i have in my head and you know he takes the premise of batman seriously and batman begins so you figure out how does he get all the equipment you, you, you know what does he do in his spare time what's happening in his life what's it's definitely these? more of an origin story than this one the 89 batman which is interesting because you know it's literally like the first super superhero movie. I, can, I mean, the Superman movies obviously were before this, but like, you know, this is this Batman is really the template for modern superhero movies, and it's not an origin story at all. He's already Batman when the movie starts. But yeah, the Christopher There's a Nolan, little bit thrown in. They throw in the death of the parents, That's which you, an you got to. You, you, and you know, if you if you don't want the new Batman spoiled, I guess skip the next 15 seconds. Just hit the skip forward button. But I, I need a question answer because I have not seen the new one yet. Do you okay. see his the Kents get – or not the Kents. Um, the Waynes get killed in the new Batman. Do you see his parents die? No, but it is a heavy plot point. Uh, okay. Their deaths weighs on his mind very heavily throughout the movie. Because that, you know, and watch, rewatching this, that's the part about this movie that I, I just hated was the scene where his parents die. It's like I've seen this like 30 times, but forgetting that this is like literally the first time most people ever saw it. So, well, And I liked how in this version, the 89 Burton version, it really isn't. I mean, yeah, I guess you can piece it together, but mostly the movie works without it. You don't even really right. need it. it. It would be just fine. He's just this guy in a bat suit, some rich guy fighting crime. It's silly. It's fun. There's a bit of an edge to it to balance out uh, what's going on. And Tim Burton, I mean, here's one of the things. Tim Burton, I, nothing about the Gotham City we see in the 89 Batman version feels like real life. I can't no, place the time on. It's like a fantastic world. It could be like the 1920s. You know what I mean? I, I felt like 19, towards 1930s, almost like a gangster movie. Like we're seeing Tommy guns and when he had the flashback um, or, you know, it just, it, it looks the same. But, There's just but no it, difference. It's a, it's Tim Burton's mind though. You know what I mean? It, it feels like Batman inside, um, you know, all of his other Edward scissor hands are inside a Beetlejuice or something like that. Cause it, it, the world Gotham city doesn't feel like any city. Whereas like in Correct. all the rest of the Batman movies, um, Gotham City's like Chicago in Batman Begins or the new Batmans or, or you know, mix between New York City and Chicago. Right. Like it feels like a real American city with a real life. Whereas this movie, it's just some fantasy world that but makes that no helps. sense. Right. But that helps. Like there's nothing about what happens that makes any actual sense in this movie. Like if you the, the logic of it doesn't really make sense. If you think where does Joker get like an electric buzzer, like where he can shake somebody's hand in electric. Well, who made that? Right. Somebody had to make that. But it. Those questions are just gone. Well, there is a there is a bit I caught in this movie that I don't ever remember when when Bruce Wayne's doing the like research on Napier. You know, once he finds out that he's still Joker, alive and he's yeah. the Joker, pre Joker. Uh, yeah. He says something about how he was like an expert in chemical engineering or something like that. So like that's how he's able to mix these chemicals together, which is like I, I didn't realize that. So maybe he just makes all this shit himself. He's just some crazy scientist. I, sure, I don't. That's fine. That explanation is as good as any. I don't. I don't really care. I don't really need an explanation because it's not going for realism. The tone makes it clear we're not in a real place, and it's informed by the super corny '60s Batman um, with Adam West. I mean, it's not that corny by a long shot, but there's some of that DNA in it. Well, I think, kind of I think from there. Nicholson's Joker looks a lot like, was it the, R- Romero? Who's the guy yes, that played? Cesar uh, Romero. I Cesar think Romero, yeah. Name. Played the jo- He looks a lot like Cesar yeah, Romero. He, he took that performance and just yeah. made it a little scarier, a little more dangerous. But there's a lot of camp there. And and it works. I mean, I you know, I, I, I concede Heath Ledger's the best Joker. I'm not, I'm not really laying claim or, or 
arguing for nothing, but I, I forgot how good this Joker performance is. I, oh I, my god, it's we, great. We need to spend some time on that. So, so you said like you you turn this on and it just kind of took you back to this world, and you were well. I'll give in. you a little other context that people maybe don't want, but like so, the first movie I ever saw in the theater was The Little Mermaid. The earliest theatrical memory I have is actually same year, this right? movie. Same year. No, I think I think Little Mermaid Little Mermaid's is 89. 89. No, Little oh, Mermaid's was, 89. Same, so, all right, same, same year. You know what else I, is 89? I, what? Feel the Dreams, baby. Okay. Same year. Perfect. All right, lots of connections, Feel the Dreams. But I don't remember the specifics of the movie. I remember being in the theater and seeing that intro of the Danny Elfman score. Yeah. And at the time when I was five... I just kind of felt like I was going through a tunnel. It, you know, it turns out we're going over the contours of the Batman symbol, but I feel like we were, I was on a thrill ride and it was just like that experience burrowed in my subconscious, just that experience of, of going around. Cause it's kind of like you're in a vehicle driving around the outside of the Batman symbol. So I saw that and, and that I mean, it was hit a little bit of those, those old memories that are buried in the recess of my brain. Um, but yes, I was, I was transported. I was, I was there. It's like this is different. It's just its own thing. It's a fantasy, and this is going to be fun from the get-go. Was that yeah. similar to you? Well, oh, I'm sure I saw this in the theater. I'm sure it was one of those, you know, saw the McDonald's toys, and we saw it 12 times in the movie theater. Uh, I don't remember it. I mean, I would have been seven. I don't have like clear memories of seeing it in the theater. But that no, I guess I would. I was saying more like, in terms of rewatching it, like you, you just sort of connected into the world. I had a little bit difference, you know, again, I've seen this movie a million times, but I haven't watched it in a really long time. W- when I turned it on, the f- that first scene where they're on the roof and, you know, he takes out those the Crooks guys. And, 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 like, I was like, when it started, I'm like, are we watching his parents get killed? I had the same thought. I was yeah. like, wait, is this the scene? Right. I was a little confused. I'm like, oh, that's right. They do the, like, faux where it's basically his parents, what happened to his parents, but he stops it. Which I think is actually kind of cool, but that whole scene, there's there's so many like weird things, like the like weird animation of him on, uh, the, yep. on the tower, and I'm like, oh, I I don't know, is this movie really gonna like not connect the way it did when I was a kid? And then even the scene where he you know beats up the guys and they shoot him, and yeah, I'm Batman, like that that whole, it just didn't work that much for me this time. Oh, around. I see, it did for but me. The like second, the effect looked bad, but it worked. The for me. second it cuts to Nicholson and he shows up on this movie, I'm just like, oh hell yes, like. There's a reason, like, I remember when watching the Heath Ledger Batman and being like, there's no way he'll be better than Jack Nicholson. I actually thought that before I saw the movie. Sure. That's, that's how good Me Nicholson, too. I mean, you can't understate how amazing Nicholson is in this movie. He's so great. And especially as an adult, all of his jokes land so much better for me now than they did as a kid. Like, uh, he's just, he's incredible. He, it's such a different Joker. But everything he does to the, like, repeating people's, lines back to him like the number one guy yeah my number one guy like that whole part oh he does a great jack Pal- jack balance <laughs> sh- sh- he does ups. a great jack balance impersonation but there's no it's reason perfect. for it. he just does it because it's funny and the and nicholson is a hundred percent committed to being the joker like when you think of nicholson you know he's obviously had this super long career and been in things from the 70s and 60s and like cowboy movies even like he's been in everything but he just dives right into this homicidal clown joker that plays with cards and uh, is just crazy. It's so, he's so great in this movie. And that's the part when I start, you know, when the scenes with Nicholson popped in, I was just like, Oh my God, this, this is so, so great. It, it took Joker to you. I would see, I was there a little earlier. Well, was... And then too, the, 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 the guy that plays, who's the reporter guy, um, that Robert actor, Ro- that guy's I never liked him in this movie. I never liked him as an actor. He's just bugs me. And he's annoying he, in this movie. His, his one liners are all terrible. Yeah. Well, his and, jokes are all really you know, Kim bad. Basinger, you know, she's amazingly hot. I don't think she's a very good actor. Like she's, and she has nothing to work with in this movie. It didn't didn't make sense. She didn't care about her perspective. Clearly. Yeah, I'm with you. There wasn't anything there. And, you know, and I think I, I mean, I'm a huge, absolutely huge Michael Keaton fan, but He's he's okay in this movie. I would just he's an all right Bruce Wayne. Like I think he he's he's sort of stoic and you know kind of distant throughout the movie. And he's good I, in the Batman costume, but I don't think he's an especially great. It's not like an especially great performance by him in this movie. Well, yeah, uh, nobody seems to know what to do with Bruce Wayne. It's an interesting question because I I couldn't land on Bruce Wayne. He's like this guy who was born with a ton of re- wealth, presumably, and then he acts like some blue collar guy and he doesn't know about stuff. 
He's like, oh, I'm just one of the guys. Let's get people grants. And he's just kind of aloof and yeah, weird. It wasn't, it, yeah, it wasn't a problem. It didn't get in the way, but I'm like, oh, what angle is this? I don't, I don't get it. Whereas, you know, you got with uh, Christian Bale, it was like, oh, the costume really is Bruce Wayne. That's the act. That's I the think he's the best playing. Bruce Wayne. Like, I have not, obviously, I haven't seen the Pattinson one, but I think Christian Bale just, he commits well, the most to, like, being well, I, yeah. this and rich, Nolan's the troubling... only one that did anything with the character, too. I mean, Nolan was clearly interested in fleshing out, you know, Bruce Wayne as a person character and his motivations. And, and this movie isn't interested in it. Um, I don't know how much I would say the most recent ones interested in either. So it's just like, yeah, we, we got to have a guy who's kind of a little quirky, kind of fine. Just but so the, like, the, stuff. The, the sort of tactileness of the world that um, Tim Burton creates is, is so real. Like this, the smoke and steam and everywhere they go. And like the, you know, like they like said, the Tommy guns, this like gangster kind of world and everything's yeah, corrupt like- and there's drugs everywhere, you know, garbage everywhere. But it's not it's not like it's not like Taxi Driver because it doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? It feels so fake and cartoony. No, the architecture is all goofy and not real. And, and like I said, it, it might as well be the Prohibition era. I mean, I just get the right. vibes that like there well, are people even, smoking even that, cigars. The Eckhart, I was gonna say, the Eckhart cop guy. I love that guy. The cigar. You know. And that guy, he played Porkins Think in about the Star Wars New Hope. He's in Raiders of the Lost Ark. I love oh, everyone. Oh, is that him? Them. Okay. Yeah, right. that's Porkins. Yeah, he chews on the cigar almost literally just has this slow drawl every time he's he's so brazen that at the crime scene early on and then he just walks like 10 feet away from the yeah. crime scene to go why don't you broadcast it yeah. jack napier who's just yeah. like around the corner just tosses him a bag of money you know I'm like but okay Very yeah subtle. it's just there's so much of that that feels you know and then you know you got city hall and you got your guy billy d williams like it's just it, it feels like this wor- world un, unto itself, you know. Right. And you think That's about it, it like like uh, Tim Burton go from Beetlejuice, Batman to Edward Scissorhands in like a two year span. It's like eighty eight to ninety. He put out those three movies. Like that's pretty incredible. Uh, you know how uh, you know Batman? I guess is not original because it's a comic book. But like, did any of the comic books feel or look that way? I feel like he created that from scratch, basically. Oh yeah, he took a no one else could have no one else could have made a movie like oh, like you said sh- the the later ones were just trying to kind of copy that because he didn't want to do them anymore. But you know it, it it's all it's all in in Tim Burton's mind that this is created. I was thinking about that too. Like you know Batman is such a culturally significant character now. You know in terms of superheroes and they'll they'll be Batman movies like they'll be James Bond movies right like we'll, they'll be doing at the Oscars a sixty year retrospective on all the Batman right don't you think isn't that just kind uh, of the way it feels yes they'll be making Batman movies long after we're dead yes but what was is that because of this movie you think or is it was I know it was obviously a comic book but this movie kind of brought it to popular culture right uh I so you're more dismissive of Superman than I am I mean that movie they they made four of those I think. And so there were but already Superman like three... had nothing to do with Batman, except that as a, they're superheroes. Right, we're talking like... about superhero movies in general. I mean, this is this one brought Batman to the masses and made it a massive pop culture. Yeah, I success. guess I'm just talking about the character Batman. Like, oh sure, how Batman is so success, significant. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it matters. But at some point, we were probably going to get the superhero revolution anyway, and he's way too. He would have been a popular character to do a movie on anyway. Uh, so I think we would have been living in an era of Batman movies regardless. Um, but was like Batman a giant comic book character? Was he like one uh, of the most I, 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 popular I, You're comics? asking the wrong guy. I don't know. I was never okay. super into comics. I always found comics too daunting. Never knew where to start. And the fact that there's several thousand iterations in different well, universes. And I know the, the, dead the, Dark Knight, the Dark Knight version that came out after this, which Nolan is really, you know, really kind of used for the template of his movies. Like, isn't that Frank Miller? I think he's the comic book artist. That's way different than I mean, like the, I suppose there was the car, the early, early and or early live action show, which I guess probably is the reason, you know, Batman was known. Yeah, by. but this took it seriously enough that people could enjoy it. Uh, I mean, that's the that biggest was, movie of the year. It made two two hundred and fifty million dollars in the late 80s. It, so it yeah, by it, far it the did biggest well enough year. for three direct sequels and a bunch of superstars, including George Clooney, to do a really terrible fourth you know, version of the movie. So, I mean, yeah, this this helped. I do think there's something primordial in the Batman character archetype that would have resonated and, and exploded on the scene in a different context, potentially. But it doesn't matter. I mean, this 
it, it wouldn't have happened this way without Tim Burton. And this is, I don't know where you're at with Tim Burton. I mean, I think somewhere around Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he lost me and he's not really ever gotten me back. Uh, but this is when his vision was just so fresh and different and weird and idiosyncratic. And it wasn't like trite and boring and he, he didn't become sort of a kitsch version of himself. Yeah. Um, so see, I, didn't, I see. didn't love, I didn't love Ed Wood. I, I maybe I need to rewatch that. Maybe it's better than I remember it. I didn't love Mars Attacks either. So really, I mean that the, I think Batman, Batman Returns, maybe we got to talk about that a little bit too, is, is really great. Batman Returns is, some people might even argue it's better than this one. Um, I, w- I would have, if you'd asked me, if anyone you asked me, I would have said that. I mean, okay. before the Nolan Batman movies, you said, what's the Batman, the best Batman movie? I, I would have probably been torn between Batman and Batman Returns, and I would have oscillated between the two. Uh, yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. But after, I guess after Batman Returns, he, he hasn't made really anything since then that has really captivated me. We watched this last Halloween, uh, but he, he, he's not like the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, right? He's like the producer or something like that. I know it's an anim- or stop action animated movie. But I don't. I, yeah, I think that's. They right. write it or something. It. He's he's but got he, some connection he, to it. It's something um, like that. Um, but like he made a Dumbo movie. He's doing all these Disney movies. He, didn't he make like a? Oh God, did he make a Cinder? Alice in Wonderland, right? Yeah, he made Alice in he Wonderland. He made two movie. Alice in Wonderland movies. Yeah, I just. I mean, he's he kind started of, doing a lot of existing IP, and then he's yeah. like, I'm just gonna make it like Tim Burton, and then they just haven't been any good. Or very good. It's a too much. So sometimes where you know, like Wes Anderson might be a little too much potentially, depending on how much of the Wes Anderson dial he turns. It just I feel like the Tim Burton dial got turned up. But see, I can always put on a Wes Anderson movie and be just oh, I like Wes Anderson myself. better. Yeah, but I, it's I like very Wes similar. Like you're in his head, just like you're in Tim Burton's head when you watch one. Yeah, of Yeah, his movies. movies all feel the same. Yeah. Uh, but this, you just find the right blend of source material. Uh, actors and it just works together exceedingly well i mean yeah some of the visual effects are really dated the internal logic is silly i, I don't get the like killing gas like he yeah kills everybody at the museum and then 30 seconds later they're all walking around without mass like that's a very toxic gas you did not clear out the gas at all um i'm kind of anxious about it um I also think it's funny that if you just dress up a bunch of people as mimes, you can walk right up to like a press conference and there are no cops around. You can just shoot people in broad daylight and then drive away. Yeah. Well, and there, there were cops there, but they didn't do anything until, you know, the, the, his, the mime started shooting, which was kind of funny. It's like, nobody's going to do anything about this. I guess like the Oscars, you just walk up and smack somebody. Nobody does anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think there's there's parts of this movie too that I found this last time that, that kind of dragged a bit. Um, really, once you know, once uh, the Joker kind of starts taking over the city, that that part of the movie I felt just kind of just kind of bored a little bit, I guess. And then you got the angst from Bruce Wayne, and you know, should he let Vicky in and all? It's I don't I don't need all that. That was it's the part a, I didn't care. Like, yeah. oh, they're gonna sit in a room and tell quirky stories. I know Bruce Wayne's got rooms in his manner that he's never been in before, and it, that romance didn't didn't land with me. But almost any time the Joker was on screen, I was having fun. I mean, yeah, absolutely. This scene it, where they're at her apartment, I think, is so great, where he just shows up. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. That that whole sequence. Um, yeah, it's like, what, where is this going? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. bizarre. But like, take the museum scene. Like, <laughs> this is the contrast. So, so this N- Nicholson's Joker is scary, and he you know, he might kill you. He might decide that he wants to kill you at any time. But he also seems like he'd be kind of fun to hang out with. You know, unlike he's a party the, man. He, That's why they have that Prince song in there, right? Because he's well, the party oh, man. right when he when they're going around the museum, just like spray painting. It's so nihilistic and silly. But there's like a very childish impulsive part of my brain that's like oh man that would be kind of fun to do to just go in a museum and trash everything there's just be something primordially gratifying about it uh they're like oh this is where's like ledger's joker like that guy just scares me and i wouldn't want to be around him at all he just terrifies me feel so disassociated with anything um and yeah joker just seems to want to have fun Seems like he wants to have a good time. Well, he took the clown thing in 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 that word direction, right? Where it's like, I'm just here to entertain everybody, and you know, I'm I'm the clown, right? Like he's goofing around. Um, but yeah, then he was also a psychopath, so. So sure, yeah, the things he thinks are fun aren't, aren't everybody's, but, um, you know, I just did. It's I'm just you wonder where 
you know, he makes the stuff like he's, yeah, they've got control of that chemical plant, but I thought there was a bunch of fires and leakage earlier in the movie when he gets deformed and then it doesn't, doesn't matter the, the balloon thing with him spewing gas out. Like I don't get yeah. the rules for this at all. Some people no. seem to be dying. Some people but seem to be able to survive. There's just so many iconic scenes. You mentioned the, you know, where he falls in the ooze, the mirror, mirror, and then he smashes it and laughs like that. That is just ingrained in pop culture, that whole sequence. Like, it's it's so classic. It is. And I, one of the things I don't think I ever realized until this time was that, okay, his face is stuck with the white makeup on before the accident. Like, that's just how his face looks. And when his face is, like, normal colored, that's because he's putting makeup on on top of his makeup. Yeah, yeah. That was one thing when I was a kid I didn't understand, too. But there's the scene where, where he shocks the other gangster guy. And it's actually kind of a cool practical effect because he takes the handkerchief out of his pocket and and looking at watching it now, you can tell he's like cupping like a, a thing of of white paint of, you know, white makeup. And he's, right. he's supposed to, with the handkerchief, be rubbing off the skin colored makeup, but he's actually rubbing on white makeup. You know what I mean? In this kind yeah. of like. Oh, yeah, trick, exactly trick. what you're talking about. But it's so, you know, you can tell he's, he's doing it in a like a tricky way. And then he just does the top part of his head. But. Um, it is kind of a cool thing. And then the scene where, where Vicky splashes him and he's like, I'm melting, I'm melting. Like the, the way they did the makeup where you can tell it's like the skin colored makeup is, is what's washing off and the white makeup under is what's being exposed. It's kind of a cool way they did that. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, that's one of the things I just didn't, didn't catch. I mean, cause I, I haven't seen this movie and ah, I mean, I was, I, I was probably in my teens when I saw it, maybe early twenties. But I, you know, I don't, I don't think I, I, I noticed all these weird little details. And yeah, I mean, Jack Nicholson's just so insane and, and entertaining and charismatic. You're just like, oh, this is, this is great. Did you ever um, watch the animated series, the Batman animated series? I did, not religiously, okay. but I saw a lot of the episodes. Oh yeah, that was like a big part of my. It was like in the early '90s, so oh you know, yeah, been under exactly ten what or whatever about. it came out. Yeah, that was that was a big deal. That 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 to me. Like the movie and then the animated series go kind of they're synonymous for me in terms of like how, why Batman matters to me, you know. Um, oh yeah, the movies resonated more. I mean, I watched those pretty regularly, especially later. It's like a Clayface two part yeah, that oh, yeah. really stuck with me. Yeah, I really really liked. I don't know why that guy that character was. I lo- I love the Clayface. Yeah, I, I w- I've always hoped they would do one. I mean. I think they'd probably screw it up, and really, it is kind of a weird character. Well, it's similar but, to Joker in that he gets a freak chemical accident, yeah. and then I guess he just gets weird powers to transform into stuff. But like the Bane, there's crazy. Bane is in that, and and Nolan's Bane is pretty closely tied to the Bane in this series. Yeah, see, I don't think I ever saw the Bane episodes in the animated series, but um, no, I don't know. Back to, I mean, back to the movie. I'm just. Yeah, the good guys are just, they're just boring. They're just there. You're just, uh, they're, they're the worst part of it. Um, I always, always used to be scared of, so, you know, his henchman, Bob. Ah, uh, yeah, my number one guy, Bob, yeah. For whatever reason, that guy used to scare me more than the Joker, and I couldn't oh, tell really? you why. I was you watching this, and I was like, that guy's not scary at all. What's the thing about him that I, I guess Willie I Nelson did. guy. Yeah, the Willie Nelson guy. The thing I didn't realize, he, Joker just shoots him. Yeah. He just kills him right right before the, you know, when the when he's like, You're, those are my balloons. He took my balloons. He just shoots the guy. I didn't, I guess I didn't remember that, that that's how he went out. It was like, Joker's just like, all right, I'm done with you. It's like, God, he just says, God, and, yeah. and then he shoots him. But in, in those moments of... Lawrence? Like, this, is he Lawrence? He's Lawrence, right? Uh, Bob is his name. It might be Bob Lawrence. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I think he always gets called Bob, but... Um, I could be wrong, I, but it, just in one of those many wonderful touch. I mean, it's, it's just absurd. It's a nonsensical comic book thing. But so first you have Batman taking these. So they have like a Macy's Day parade, basically. And it feels like a yeah. retro Macy's Day parade. And these they're throwing money out at people in the street. And they know this guy's a murderer and a criminal and they let him do it. And no cops shoot him or anybody else on the street. It doesn't make any sense why nobody stops him. But. They put on a parade and they have all this noxious gas. Batman takes his Batmobile or uh, the the Bat plane, I guess, captures all the balloons and sends them out, and then decides he's gonna like do a, a victory shot back against the moon for no reason. Oh yeah, right? no, that it's was shameless. just to sell ads or you know, to right, that's, right, just for the kids, but, you know. But that's then for- he comes back and he starts flying towards Joker, and it's just I love it because it's so wonderfully stupid. Joker takes out. A stup- super long, like it looks like a handgun, but it's got an insanely long barrel yeah. 
absurdly long barrel. I don't even know if a gun could shoot like that. I mean, a gun people could tell no, me. No, it's it's but like a, it, it it's a joke. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would make it would work at all. And he shoots the, the bat plane down, and Batman crashes. And it's just like, oh, this is so stupid. And he had that the whole time. But I um, love the symmetry of that scene with the with the Dark Knight Joker, right? Because there's a there's a similar scene where where once when uh, Batman flips the truck in the Dark Knight, and the Joker walks out and he's like, "Come on, hit me, hit me! I want you to do it! I want you to do it!" And Batman's driving at him, and they sort of have this head-on collision. I really loved the symmetry of that from this movie, where he flies the Batwing at him and he shoots him like. I thought that was a really cool like callback to the this movie that that oh, Nolan sure. did. Could be, but I, I don't know. And, the, and then in the brilliant setting, I mean, we get this like rear window. They climb up this absurd tower with like ancient wooden steps that haven't been updated yeah. in a long time. It's but, got, very gothic. Like it feels like, very old. And oh, I want to ride in five minutes. He looks up. Better make it ten. Like what? Yeah. Where are they? <laughs> is he just climbing up some clock tower? It's like yeah, back in Notre Dame. Like, what is going on? These bells that he knocks yeah. out with this bizarre acid and his stupid little. Well, and there's like already acid. guys up there too. His henchmen are up there. There's the guy with the kung fu that's doing the flips and stuff. Like, it's oh, a, yeah, it's he, a weird. Yeah, it's a weird sequence. But I, I love I love it. I mean, I, I love it. And I like that Batman has almost no. Either. He, there's not the no killing thing. Batman kills people in this movie. Um, at the top of that tower, he's fighting some dude. Um, but around one of those bells, and he drops the guy, and you see a an animation of this dude falling. Or yeah, but he doesn't in. always. The, in the first scene where he where he knocks the Napier into the vat, making him the Joker. He tries to save him. He's sure. trying. He tries to save him, but he also saves. There's a couple guys he that he knocks over and then catches them and saves them. So he's trying to save the bad sure, guys. Sure, but but he's not, he's but he does kill people. I mean, it does happen, I guess, accidentally, which we don't see in any other. Batman movies that I'm aware of where we see clearly, oh, somebody's somebody's dead. Um, uh, I didn't appreciate that. I mean, like, we just get very little of a psychology. Like, he's just this guy fighting crime. Uh, some people don't think he exists, and then more and more people do. It, uh, yeah, the, every every setting is fantastic. The, the chemical plant where Joker gets dropped into that vat of chemicals. It's just such a lovely, absurd setting. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. Where there's this unguarded plant with just vats of chemicals swirling around, really. But it looks cool. It's a fun place to put a, a comic book scene in. Um, no. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, we don't we don't care about Bruce Wayne. It's it's interesting how little Bruce Wayne actually matters. All we know is he, he's just a little lonely. He's just a little a little sad because he's by himself. But Yeah, it's uh, that's a tricky character to nail. Um because, you know, they, they try to make him the, sort of the playboy kind of thing where he has this party, but you don't see enough of that in this movie. Um, he just seems like lonely and weird is really the, like the main takeaways. And then he dresses up like a bad and beats the shit out of people at night, which is uh, also a really weird ass thing to do. Yeah, does it ever say, hey, I started to do this because my parents... Like, does there is there any lines of dialogue where it's like, oh, he lost his parents and he decided he's going to fight crime? I don't motivations? think so. I, I guess I always took it because you know, in this movie, which is not sort of the canon in all the other movies, I, I guess except for the Joker movie, where um, the Joker is the one that kills his parents, right? Like in in the Dark Knight in the Dark Knight series in the Batman Begins, it's not it's not the Joker that kills his parents. It's it's you know some criminal, just some random thug. But in this movie, it is Napier. I, I guess I always assumed he was just trying to find him to get revenge. That was the whole reason he became the Batman, was to just, like, get to, to Nicholson. But I, that's, I guess, not really the case in the movie. Because even once he finds out that he's still alive, he's really not just trying to get him. He's more trying to save Vicky Vale than anything. Right. He, he doesn't seem to, like, want revenge. You know what I mean? In the way that uh, you would... He- yeah, that's well. That's a very clear contrast. Revenge slash vengeance is a big thing, and then newest Batman. Uh, it's a big theme. And yeah, it was almost absent. So at least in comparison to that yeah, movie, yeah, it is like the I am vengeance. Thing. That's like the calling card for the movie. It is, yeah. And this one, it's like I, you know, he's like, I don't know. It's almost like he's just finds it fun. He's just like bored. It's like, all right, well, what do I got to do? I can just go out and fight all these horrible, corrupt people or junkies on rooftops that are mugging people.
Well, should we transition over to our ratings? Let's do it. All right. Do you want to go first? What'd you rate the movie at? I, I so four out of five. Um, and the the lack of a five really comes from some of the effects are a little bit dated, and there are a few parts. The the romance is it's not very compelling. Uh, doesn't make a you know just like that. It's kind of flat. Not a lot going on. We have the reporter character we spend a lot of time with, but all he does is make wisecracks, and his plot is mostly pointless. I mean, he doesn't do anything. It doesn't matter. Well, he's trying Vicky. to get with Vicky the whole time too. That's right. Also- and they're supposedly going to take down the bat, but then yeah. Vicky ends up just falling for Bruce Wayne. And that's the, pl- just like transitions to that plot. When you, when you bring up Vicky, that was, that was the part too. Like, what is her deal? Like, so she's a photographer in this movie, right? She does like the Vogue, but she also like a, goes to the court all Martise or whatever the like, war yeah, she's pictures. doing war photography and stuff. But She her. comes to Gotham because she, she's like horny for a bat is like the, that was what I think that's her next big scoop. She's going to try to win like a, I don't know if you can win a Pulitzer for photography, whatever, uh, like an amount of prestige. I think she, she wants to get away from the fashion world and wants to become a very serious. But she never artist. was trying to take his picture. In the home, she's never taking she, anybody's picture. She, she takes she, his picture and then he takes the film from her. So that's she right. does. Yeah, when he gets knocked over. Yeah, that's right. She, he does take a take a picture, but like so after she, that, he she's not interested in photographing him. Well, she figures it out, and then she's like, I, "I've got to keep his secret too." And then it doesn't matter. She love wins out over her career, which is blah. Um, it'd be more interesting if she snuck pictures in and was using it or something. It'd be a way to compel it, but. Um, I mean, I said this just reminds me of another great scene is at the museum when Joker's looking at a portfolio and he's like, terrible, mm-hmm. awful, terrible. I mean, it's just like, oh, this is hilarious. Uh, this is just absolutely hilarious. But uh, those are the reasons why I wouldn't be a full five. But I mean, it's really fun to look at. The setting is great. It's just fun to me beginning to end. I didn't care about the weird animation. I kind of thought like, oh, yeah, that looks goofy. But I also kind of like that weird bat moving on the rooftop. I was like, oh, I, I sometimes get nostalgic for old special effects when they're charming, even if they look bad. Um, but, you know, this is four out of five. I was thoroughly entertained. It held up way better than I thought it would. And it was such a awesome change of pace from pretty much every Batman movie, even if you include Justice League, uh, you know, this is just such a fun change of pace. More entertaining. Well, that's the worst Batman. If we're ranking Batman's, I think Batfleck is Ben Affleck's Batman is the worst. But well, as a Batman, maybe. Uh, I mean, the worst one's still Batman and Robin. That's the worst overall movie. I haven't seen Batman Ooh, v Superman. Too, I don't know Batman v Batman Superman. Batman Robin is so awful. Yeah, but that it is, is it's awful. funny though. It's funny though. Well, you can laugh at it ironically. Yeah. It's not you're not laughing with the movie. You're just no. like I can't believe they made these choices. I can't believe George Clooney. They is put in this nipples movie. on Batman. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Why do they have like butt cheeks carved into their costume? Yeah. This is nonsense. Who is these decisions are insane and so stupid. Why are these guys on ice skates? This but is so everything stupid. Schwarzenegger says in that movie is hilarious. Well, he tries. He's I mean, he's the only one with any kind of real comedic timing or chops in that movie. Um, but the yeah, the ice puns are over like there's like 20 or 30 ice related puns or cold related puns yeah. in that movie. It's just bad. I haven't seen I've seen the Snyder Cut of Justice League. I haven't seen Batman v Superman. Maybe that's the absolute worst one. I don't know. It's, it's so I thought bad. Justice League was better by far than Batman and Robin, which I, I think Did you just... see the original Justice League? You're, you said I Snyder Cut. Okay, the yeah, Snyder Cut's well, well improved version because the original Justice League was trash also. Okay, fair enough. All right, well, anyway, yeah, that's, that's me. Four out of five held up really well. Super entertaining. Uh, don't be scared to watch it. You know, if you go back, you'll have a good time, and I think you'll probably remember mostly what you love by it. You might even catch some stuff because that 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 Nicholson Joker, he's got a lot of pop culture references spew out. Yeah, and for that reason, yeah, I put it at four and a half. Um, didn't put it at five just because I think the Dark Knight's better. Um, cool. but it, you know, it's it's I mean, it it's pretty great. It's a pretty great movie. The Nicholson, every scene he's in, just talk about stealing. I mean, from from the scene where he shocks the other gangsters and a little hot under the collar. I mean, everything he says is so it's 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 corny, but also kind of dark and funny at the same time. And he's fully committed to it all. Um, Well, yeah, he's always maniacally laughing at his own insane macabre humor. And yeah, just the 
the flower that instead of squirting water squirts acid and all, all the stupid corny like gags and becoming lethal it's all fun i mean yeah any, anytime he's on the screen it's pretty much entertaining from the get-go you would hit a guy with glasses <laughs> yeah i mean everything he does is hilarious and then the fact that it's jack nicholson one of the like greatest literally greatest actors in the history of cinema is also just a little hilarious that he's in this bed ba- and he's like he must have been at least 50 right by the yeah he, time- he's on the backish end of yeah, his career right. like, like he's already been established he's already done his prestige stuff and won his oscars I, how many oscars has he already won by then he does win another one after this though right as good as it gets I, I, for either he's got as good as yeah. it gets is, is a few years later and then i don't know if he gets one for but he's already uh, a legend Schmidt. he's a legend he's an acting legend yeah this is a movie you're yeah. kind of shocked he would do like jack palance didn't have the success that jack nixon did so you see oh yeah he's playing some mob guy but yeah it's, it's so bizarre to see somebody as situated as jack nicholson in this role didn't nicholson get like a ton of money too because like they paid oh, him a sure. lot to be in it but didn't he get like 10 percent of all the money that the movie made it's he just, probably like, did and, and they worked fortune. around and they filmed it around the lakers home game schedule too like sure, they, they yeah. couldn't shoot because he wanted to go to lakers home games yeah. like i'll be i'll be your joke but like but i'm not even i'm so not much, missing any lakers games even, well, that's actually a really good nicholson man that's pretty solid um, but even to the to the point with the the makeup that made him smile, that shit looked an uncomfortable, right? Like, oh there's yeah, no I was way like, that why was... did he go through this? Yeah, and I, I think, there's a scene know, where he tries to drink his martini money. when when Sugar Bumps comes in. He's drinking his martini and he can barely like move his lips, and it looks like he's just like sort of pouring it in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, but which makes him look more insane. It adds right, it's, to the, the overall he's, effect. He's not. He's a hundred percent like I'm this guy with this trying to drink, and it makes no sense, and it's ridiculous. But he he's so committed to it that it's it's actually kind of impressive when it should be a like a really bad scene. Um, so yeah, I mean for that reason, four and a half, I just can't get it to five because I think you're right. There is some stuff that's a little dated. Um, that the the sort of latter third of the movie I think drags a bit up until really until the the 20, 200 year celebration stuff. Um, love the music. You mentioned the music. the The score is oh, the great. Print that, soundtrack. It's but then it's yeah, we haven't even talked delightful. really about Prince yet. He did all the music. He did the song in the own. movie. Yeah, um, gotta love the Prince um, stuff. But the one thing that did jump out at me, this, there's only like th- two or three of the songs from the soundtrack that are actually in the movie. Um, so that was a little interesting, but the score is so iconic. The, the, that's the, that's the music they use sort of till today. I mean, they tweak it a bit, but that's Batman, right? Like that's Batman music when you hear it. Yeah. But I, well, yeah, I mean, I love that they, yeah, they bring the blue box into the museum. I was like, Oh, this is great. I, so usually you have this problem in comics where you have like, where do the henchmen come from and why do they do this? Right? Like, why are they engaged in this? But you just feel like these dudes that are with Joker, are like, this shit is insane. I'm going to ride to this guy because this is nuts. Sure, I'll put on my my makeup and go to City Hall. Sure, let's do some spray painting and dance to some Prince music at a museum and trash it. Sounds good. Let's do some corny dancing in a parade and throw wads of cash out. Sounds like a good time, my man. I'm there. But it's just it's just delightfully silly. Um, it seemed him somewhat convincing. He was like, oh, yeah, I get it. He'd be fun to hang around this guy. Uh, all right, should we shift over to the five degrees of field of dreams? Yes, we should. Uh, do all you want right. to go first, Eric? Sure, I can go first. Uh, this was a fun one. I really enjoyed this. Uh, it was a little tricky. So, so I went with a, a lot of actors in movies that I really like because I was just thought it would be fun. Uh, all right, so 1989's Batman, star of the movie, Michael Keaton plays Bruce Wayne in Batman. Um, mm-hmm. he's in one of my all-time favorite movies, Birdman, or The Unexpected okay. Virtue of Ignorance. I love that movie so much. I know you don't like it all that much, but I, it's one of my all-time favorites. Oh, I love parts of it, but I just don't like where it gets really preachy and... It's very preachy, yep, yep. It's a little heavy-handed, but uh, one of my favorites. Um, Edward Norton's in that movie, and he's he's really good in that movie, and I normally don't like Edward Norton. He's one oh, of those I think actors. he's good. I, I, it's I don't, interesting. Don't care for him normally. What's but, he in that you think he's bad at? Whether you'd like him as a person. Not, it's not that he's bad. Well, <laughs> well, he, the Hulk movie's terrible. Italian Job, oh. he's terrible in that movie. Okay. Uh, just annoying. Um, Rounders, I got. It's it's one of his. He's iconic playing an roles. annoying character. He's playing in a, a deliberately irritating yes, character. But and he's he, deliberately irritating in it. 
and, and he's good in that role. But then when he started to try to be like the leading man, like in Red Dragon, and what was the, the heist movie he was in with? Um, was it Marlon Brando in it? Like one of his last movies? I can't what? remember. The score? Yeah, the score, I think, is what it is. Marlon yeah, he was Brando's in the score? Uh, yeah, De Niro and Marlon Brando. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the score. Have oh, you, you never okay. seen that movie? It's no, a, it's, a, it's a good heist movie. Um, okay. But he's like the lead man in that movie, and uh, he just kind of annoys me. 25th Hour, I think, is a great movie, and he's okay in that as the lead. But it, oh, he I tries, think he's great in 25th Hour. He's, but, he's okay. great. When he tries to be like a tough guy, it's just it's the most unconvincing thing ever because he, he does not he serves me as this weaselly little wimp you don't think and, he's great in american history x it, it, i don't think it's all that convincing because he's such a wimp it, it's probably his best like all-around performance wow okay you just don't think he's masculine and tough enough you just like here's a lame hollywood actor twerp pretending to be tough okay i, I can't I, like even in 24th hour he's supposed to be this really tough like his dad's a cop and he's dealt drugs and stuff and there's you know a scene where they he asked him to punch him and like he's supposed to be this really tough guy it just doesn't really land that much and i like i said i love 25th hour that movie's amazing but that's just where i stand on that edward norton interesting uh, okay uh he's he put out a movie i haven't seen it in 2019 called motherless brooklyn uh i think he directed it too maybe i wrote and directed it i don't didn't see it don't know anything about it but uh alec baldwin is in that movie and he's in uh, The Hunt for Red October, which is a great movie. Um, Sean Connery's like Russian accent is all time in, in that movie. It's so great. So stupid that he's like a Scottish guy in the Russian army. Anyways, uh, James Little Jones is also in that, and he's in Field of Dreams. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah, man, I'm trying, I tried to get different venues to get to different actors inside Field of Dreams. So I, I was able to take a different route. So we, we start with uh, Batman, of course, then I hopped over to Beetlejuice, still Tim Burton, obviously Michael Keaton, star of that movie. Uh, he's in Beetlejuice. Did they ever work together again after that? After Returns? Well, Batman Returns, and then... Right, uh, yep. Because they, they did like three movies together, back to back to back. I don't think they ever worked together again. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, Michael Keaton's a guy who kind of after the 90s, I mean, he was in stuff, but he seemed to not be in nearly as much. I don't know. He seemed to have his time to shine in the 80s. and He's had a resurgence. Since, since Birdman, he's had a resurgence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like for a while I, before Birdman, I mean, he was doing stuff clearly, but I just, I don't remember what he was doing between like 2000 and 2014. And that'd be stuff, but I don't know what it was. Yeah, it was, so Beetlejuice, Catherine O'Hara is in Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton. Um, and Catherine O'Hara is in a Scorsese movie called After Hours. Are you familiar with After Hours at all? I, I am. It's another one of those Scorsese movies that I'm supposed to love, and I don't. I, I think well, it's, I it's, like it. It's a crazy movie, a lot of crazy. It's one of those like one all-in-one-night movies. Um, it's entertaining. I, I just I, I didn't love it. I, yeah, I like it, not love it too. I, mean, I have a similar reaction. I mean, it's just, it's fun. I'm not bored, but it, was it one of his best? No, but um, he's in that movie with, or excuse me, she, Catherine O'Hara, uh, is in the movie with Terry Gar, who's like the waitress that is into Griffin Dunn, and Terry Gar. And this is a side note. This isn't my connection, but Terry Gar is actually the wife of Michael Keaton and Mr. Mom. So just another like, isn't uh, in after just sorry in after hours isn't the dad from Home Alone in that movie too? Yes, He's like the yeah. bartender. So the yeah, both the mom parents. and the dad are yeah the both parents are in that movie. Yeah, that's funny. That's right. Yep. So and Terry Gar is in a movie called Mom and Dad Save the World or Save the Planet. I'm not sure which one. I think Save the World. Are, have you ever heard the Mom and Dad Save the World? Does that mean nope. anything to you, Eric? Nope, means nothing to me. Nope. Okay, it's this. Very cornball sci-fi-ish fantasy movie from like 1994. It was a commercial and critical flop. It involves Terry Gar and uh, the guy who's the the um, principal in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I don't remember that guy's the actor's name, but the Howard the Duck the, guy. Yeah, so they're the mom and dad, and they get for whatever reason. John Lovitz is the dictator on this planet of people who are exceptionally stupid. Like that's, that's expressly conveyed in the movie. They're just profoundly stupid people on this planet. And for whatever reason, John Lovitz sees Terry guard falls in love with her and has pulls their car across the galaxy to him. 
And so they end up on this like sci-fi planet and they end up having to defeat John Lovitz. And it's, it's really insane. It's not good, but it's also entertaining. Anyway, uh, there's a guy in it called Durian Brown. And Durian Brown plays Kevin Costner's dad in Field of Dreams. Okay. So that's why we took this bizarre turn to this other movie. So yeah, he's the guy that says, should we have a catch? Have a catch, yeah. And I was like, how do I get to that guy? And so that was my route for, for getting to that guy. Wow, look at you. So uh, check another one off the list. I found a way to get to that guy. I've got some other ones to get through at some point, but goal achieved. Impressive. All right. Any uh, closing words on 1989's Batman? Oh, no. It's a good time. Uh, if it's still on, or, well, I, I got promotional credits and watched it on Amazon Prime, but if you spend four bucks to rent it, I, I it's don't not, It was on HBO show. Max. Actually, all of the Batman movies, I think uh, Batman Returns, I think the third one is on there. Is the third one the Two Face and Carrie one? Correct. Jim Carrey went Batman okay, yeah. Forever. Forever, yeah. I think that's on there. So I think that as of at least the recording of this, that they're all on HBO Max. Oh, okay. I must have missed it, but I had free promotional credits, so I rented it on Prime. Either way. But if you, yeah, it's very much worth a watch. Okay. Well, the next episode is kind of a special episode. We have a guest, a guest on the Pot of Dreams, and the guest pick for that uh, episode is The Last Dragon, another 80s movie crazy kooky uh sort of folk kung fu movie the last dragon so watch that uh leading up to our next week's episode and that's all we got ben take it easy man you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight how about this you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight have a good one bye-bye